just uh, installing Windows. I think I figured it all out, and um, it's a pretty simple fix actually. Um, all it is basically is when the the processor is using all six cores, it overheats, and then it starts to throttle. It gets really slow, and it gets really fast, really slow, really fast. And this can happen on certain workloads. For example, if you compile code for a long time, or if you run parallels, or use a CPU and GPU at the same time. And all you have to do in that state is, if you disable the turbo boost function, rather than it constantly trying to go really fast and then have to slow down, it will just stay at a constant level. So for the i9 that I've got here, it stays at a constant 2.9 gigahertz, which is the base speed. On the i7, it will just stay at its base speed. took 187 seconds. I'm going to disable turbo boost this time and as you can see it's still on that 2.9 level. Oh it's actually finished. Okay it's better now. Okay that's nice. And you can see it's maintaining a nice 4.2 so now it's leveling at 2.9. The temperature's gone right down. The fan's going to go down very soon. But let's see how this runs. This now seems very stable. Less jitters. It's an all round more stable experience. Look at that temperature just dropping and dropping. Now, turbo is really useful and it's, it's useful for certain circumstances. For example, if you're doing a short bit of work, leave turbo to run and everything will be good. Or if you're doing a single core piece of work, leave the turbo on and it won't affect anything. Game is gorgeous. Gorgeous game. 1,814 threads, that's amazing. Anyway, let's get in there. Let's get a quick jump. So it's still 4.3. It's pretty healthy at the 4, 4.3. But if you're doing Multi-core stuff, if you leave that turbo on, if it goes for a longer than normal period of time. Just compiling FFmpeg. With the fan spinning, it's going to start to throttle. Now the good thing about turning turbo off is, you get um, silence. So the fan speed doesn't kick off because it doesn't get really hot. So I'm just um, I'm going to be showing you all the benchmarks. I'm going to be showing you what you can use to turn off turbo and all that stuff. It's a it's honestly it's a really simple uh, fix. Apple can easily do this. Um, but yeah, if you can get this to Apple, just let them know because it's it's a really easy fix. Just pretty much if you're using a certain threshold or if you notice that pattern of throttling, just turn off turbo and it will settle on the base clock speed. All right, so I'm going to do one more test and uh, I'm going to try to modulate the turbo myself. Let's get this going. And when I see it throttle, I'm going to just disable it. There you go, disable it. Let it rest for a little while and then turn turbo back on. Get five seconds of fast speed, turn turbo off, and Performance-wise on Geekbench, it's actually amazing. All right, let's do it. This is with Turbo Boost enabled. All right, so you can see 5,500 and 2,100, 21,500. Now, let's disable Turbo Boost. And this is the score without Turbo. This now 3,800, so the single score has actually reduced significantly. So I think all it is really is if you're doing single core operations, layer turbo boost, and if you're doing an application which has a multi-core purpose, that's where you disable the turbo boost and you avoid that throttling. All right, all right, I know what you're thinking. It's slower, single core, I want that 5,000. Well, there's another app you can use. It's not donationware like turbo boost switch switcher. It's called Volta, you've probably heard of it already. And the problem with that app is um, you need to disable system integrity, just the, the kex part of it. 
and uh, it does it does phone home every single time you launch it you can save it if you've got a firewall and with that one it's actually really amazing because you can actually control the amount of energy these CPUs use now the problem with the 8th generation CPUs is that they all use more than the 45 watt limit that are given and um, Apple don't limit the CPUs from overusing the limit so set your TDP limit you can actually keep turbo boost and get some really good scores so this way we get to keep our single core speed and we also get a nice multi-core speed and that's and the power limit and keeping our turbo and that's the fastest one so far and that's it that's it see everyone's right about the macbook pro it is fast and it is slow they're all right everyone's right <laughs> can you believe it no one's wrong they're all right everyone that said it was slow is right everyone said it's fast is right <laughs> It just depends on what you use it for, but it's an easy fix. So, um, yeah, share this video, let people know, and take it easy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play some games on Windows. I want to see how it compares to Max, Mac Pro, the RX 580. Get some Tomb Raider. The only reason why I got this machine, really, to be honest, I just wanted the discrete graphics cards so I can play games on the fly. And then hopefully someone else out there can do some serious tests about the battery life and all that kind of stuff. Uh, other interesting observations for the full review is. The sound is different. So my voice on this computer sounds deep. I have a deep voice on this computer. Last year's generation, oh, 2016, 2017, my voice sounds so tinny. I don't even know what the real voice is because I've been so used to this. But what was interesting is when I'm hearing my videos now on this laptop, I really notice all the hissing and all the low level frequencies. So hopefully my videos will improve thanks to this uh, beautiful speaker set. Obviously, you professional guys, you have headphones, you don't really care about me. I'm a little kid in the world, still trying to find my way, but, yeah, let's, uh, let's go. Let's go install this Windows. I wonder if Windows handles um, throttling better than the, the Mac. Or maybe just Windows games aren't optimized for six cores. I'll find out I'll let you know. Last time, it took 38 seconds, but with the CPU completely being destroyed by FFmpeg, it exported it in 1 minute and 5 seconds, which is pretty much the same speed they exported it on a 2017 i7. Are you still there? Alright, here's some bonus tips. If you use that cool, kick-ass Volta app, you can actually throttle your uh, power limits down, and you can still get some good speeds but quiet fan operation, rather than playing with that Mac fan control, which is actually a cool app. Um, that one, you just lower the TDP value, the power limit, and you get um, a fast operation with good speeds. Secondly, if you are doing benchmarks, the first few days is very dangerous, especially if you're restoring from a, a Mac backup. For example, me, I had MDS store running in the background. If you don't know what it is, that's spotlight indexing, and that was eating away my CPU and slowing everything down. Thirdly, if you're loading up an Xcode project for the first time and uh, you're, you're benchmarking that, make sure that source code, um, source control is disabled. So Xcode is doing a lot of source control. So it's going through Git at the moment, so it's probably a bad time to be testing. Because that eats up 100% of your CPU. So, well, for my project anyway, it depends on how big the Git is. But for me, it was tuning up 100% CPU and slowing down my compile times. Now, this one is not for the faint of heart, and it's for the i9 people. So on um, Windows, you can get an app called Intel XTU, Extreme Tuning Utility. Now, what's cool about the i9 is because it's an unlocked processor, you can use this tool to modify the processor speed. You can go all the way up to 4.3. It's crazy. I'm not going to do this because I'm not looking to overclock. I'm just looking to turn off turbo and that fella because um the i9 is unlocked i haven't tried it myself because i don't know what it will do to the warranty and all that kind of stuff but you can overclock your 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 cpu but more importantly you can underclock it some really cool settings in this app so you can limit the maximum ratio that the processor can use while six cores are active so this is what needs to be tweaked when all six cores are active you don't want to be hitting that turbo at that rate anyway 43 is too high so maybe, maybe you can turbo to 
3.6, 3.3, you know, play around with those figures, but when it goes into the 4, it just gets way too hot. And I guess Apple needs to change the advertisement. It doesn't go to 4.8. I guess it does with a cooler, actually. Sorry. So you can um, slow down a couple of the cores, maybe have four really fast cores, two slow cores, you know, play around with it. And I hope that's what Apple will do. They'll, they'll tweak it a little bit, like they did with their iMac Pro. They didn't just take the Xeon chips from Intel. They, they tweaked them to fit in their thermal restrictions for their case. And hopefully they'll do that with the MacBook Pro. They probably just had to rush it out because of the keyboard stuff. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. I've got uh, an i7 coming tomorrow, but I, I think um, pretty much using this, this technique, it looks like the i9 will be at least 12% faster than the, the i7 2.6 because when you throttle, when, when you disable turbo boost, um, it goes down to the base clock. So on the i9, it's 2.9, and on the i7, it's either 2.2 or 2.6. Well, I'll, see, I'll see, I'll have to play around with it. But to be honest, uh, going from a 13 inch to, to a 15 inch is like a 300% jump anyway to this generation. So an extra 5% here and there is, is, is not that much. Yeah, all right. Uh, Arrivederci.